protected seawall, for example, is a seawall that has less than two miles of open water. An unprotected seawall is a seawall that has two miles or greater of unprotected water, something you might find, for example, facing the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean, whereas a protected or less than two mile seawall would be on a canal, on a riverbank, or someplace where there's not a lot of chance for the wind to pick up speed and create a lot of wave action. Depending on where it's located, and typically with residential construction, we're going to be dealing with protected seawalls because we're dealing with, some, with single family homes for the most part. PVC has come on the market in the last 15 to 20 years. This is what they call corrugated PVC. It's plastic basically, so its ability to corrode is non-existent. It's being used more and more in seawalls for that reason. This is again a long view. It has a concrete cap on it, but the wall itself is plastic or PVC. This is an example of how it's installed. You can see where they're interlocking the panels. Here they dovetail each other and then they pour a cap on top to stabilize it and keep it nice and straight. Dead men and tie rods up on the upper picture and installing PVC piles on the lower picture. This is an example of a new wall being installed in front of it but on the seawood side of an older wall. They're using a wood cap as well. They've screwed the tie rods into the wood cap. It's two by four or something. Sometimes, sometimes they can use larger lumber. They have anchored it back into the lawn. Stone walls are very commonly in retaining ponds and where there's, uh, when the water is fairly calm and there's no wave action. They look pretty, but they can't take a lot of lateral stress however. This is a close-up of what they look like. Corrugated galvanized steel, again, the galvanization helps protect against water corrosion, and it's a way to create a seawall without having to use concrete. Unfortunately, when you look at the water line, this happens to be brackish water it's in. Brackish water, by the way, is a combination of uh, clean and salt water, or non-salted and salt water mixed together, sort of a diluted salt water. They call it brackish because of the minerals in it. You can see right here that the water line, you can see right here at the water line where it's corroding, and that's partially due to the submersion and the exposure to air. It's two bad combinations when you're dealing with steel, combination of the air and the water, in other words. This is how corrugated steel panels are installed. They usually pound it into the ground or pound it into the edge of the land mass. When they reach a certain resistance, they figure that's enough and then they finish it off. Here's a cross section of a corrugated steel panel galvanized, and you can see where, they're where they've installed a dead man and connected it to a tie rod, both high and low at various intervals. 10 feet is not an unusual distance between them, for example. Seawalls, corrugated panels, and wood piles can all be jetted in. This is what the picture is showing here where they're jetting them into the water. What they do is they stick the long rod into the water coming out of the end, down to, into the soil, adjacent to where the panel or the corrugation is going. This loosens up the soil enough so they can push that panel down in there and get to a lot of friction resistance. The other picture shows a hammering effect, where they're, they're actually hammering the panels in place, usually with a large weight that gets lifted up and down, or rather lifted up and dropped onto the panel top. It pounds it into the ground with the hammer. These are corrugated aluminum panels. You can see where they don't do well with salt water. They're pretty well corroded because aluminum and salt water don't mix. Aluminum, is, aluminum does not corrode. What I should say, it doesn't rust, it oxidizes, which is basically the same thing. It's just an aluminum version of rust. It doesn't turn red like rust does. It turns white like powder. You can see examples here where it's actually eating right through the corrugation. Once it reaches that point, there's no saving it. Corrugated steel panels, you can see the interlocking edge of the corrugation sheet steel right here. The next panel would lock into that circular area and hold together, hold itself together so they combine. The other picture shows a tractor pounding a corrugated panel into the soil. Corrugated sheet panel with a concrete cap, another example. This is a PVC seawall that has failed as a result of buckling. You can see where the wall is going every which way it wants to. It's bending in the middle. 
I'm really not sure what's causing it. It shouldn't have been just the weight of the cap itself, which looks like it's concrete. But for some reason, the PVC panels have failed and we don't know why. It could be a manufacturing defect or it could be something else. Oh, 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 oh,